Meghan, Archie, and Lilibet are in danger. Harry's colossal mistake in his TV interview. His decision to tell all could be about to have serious unintended consequences for him and his family. Hello and a very warm welcome back to Kate Middleton and the Queen News YouTube channel. Now, I don't think anybody out there has ever accused Harry of being a secret genius. He is the author of the world's most talked about book, the antagonistically titled Spare. But nobody has ever accused him of being somebody troubled by a burdensome IQ, and nobody's ever accused Harry of being somebody who does the New York Times crossword in permanent marker. But if there were ever any proof whatsoever that Harry is a little bit of an idiot, then look no further. Now, Harry has spent years and years talking about how much he despises the media, but still, at the end of the day, he's a man and he's got a book to sell. And that is why last week you couldn't escape Harry. He agreed to a series of TV interviews to market his tell-all. He kicked it all off with a talk with ITV's Tom Bradby, and that is something that I only recommend you sit through if you absolutely have to. Guys, I watched it. It was painful. It was a full 90 minutes of Harry looking red-faced and frustrated at Bradby's refusal to just buy his tired arguments. Harry also rolled out a whole series of new ridiculous lines, like when he said he hoped that a reconciliation between my family and us will have a ripple effect across the entire world. Uh, okay, Harry. But in unleashing this media firestorm and in releasing Spare, Harry may have done something pretty short-sighted. He may have unwittingly opened Pandora's box. With Spare and the PR campaign that's going along with it, Harry has, according to an expert, dealt a serious blow to his chances of ever getting to enjoy anything even remotely close to privacy in the future. Ever since The Guardian's Martin Pendley managed to get a copy of Spare last week, followed by some Spanish booksellers putting the title on sale days early, we have gotten to see a lot of embarrassing, deeply personal, and cringeworthy revelations. Those living down under are going to have to wait until Wednesday until they can officially get their hands on a copy of the book. But still, we already know this book has more than enough skeletons from the royal family's closet. And that, my friends, is exactly what the problem is. And the problem is not even that he betrayed his family by revealing the most personal conversations, or that he crossed a serious line when he decided to drag his family's problems into the public. And not that it looks like now he is trading royal confidences for a big fat paycheck. But the biggest problem is that by releasing Spare, Harry has undermined his own quest for privacy in the future. According to the editor of the UK's Press Gazette, Harry's choice to publish this book means that he's going to have to wave goodbye to his chances of being left alone by snappers and journalists. The Gazette's Dominic Ponsford wrote, One of the big factors judges take into account when assessing privacy claims is the extent to which claimants have put matters into the public domain themselves. And one ex-tabloid executive has said, you can't write about losing your virginity and in the next breath complain about lack of privacy. Suspect A, Paps will now be a regular fixture again wherever he goes. And B, UK picture desks will start buying and publishing, safe in the knowledge he won't be able to claim privacy. Pretty ironic stuff, huh? Here we've got a man and his wife who launched a whole series of high-profile lawsuits against the media, and now he has possibly opened the floodgates for an even greater level of scrutiny. So let's begin with the pat part of this whole mess, because as it is, photos of Harry and Meghan while they're off duty, I mean, I don't think they're ever on duty these days, but anyway, now they regularly show up in the tabloids. During the interview with Bradby, Harry tried to insist that he was so at peace, so happy in his life. But that assertion does not make sense when we consider the level of intrusion that Meghan and Harry are now facing in the U.S. Now, for one thing, when they were in the U.K., they lived on the Windsor estate, and that is surrounded by official security, affording the family a lot more privacy. See, that is why, for example, we have never gotten to see an aerial shot of Frogmore Cottage. But by contrast, there are so many images of Meghan and Harry's $20 million California McMansion. Side note, in 2020, Meghan and Harry took legal action against one paparazzi agency because they alleged they flew a drone over the L.A. home that they were living in at the time. There's also an agreement between the media and the palace over photos of royal children. So that means the press cannot buy or publish any photos of the children that were taken without their consent. For example, when they're out at the park or when they're out shopping with their mother. In an interview that Megan did with The Cut magazine last year, the journalist Allison P. Davis wrote that she had discussed her fears over photos being taken of Archie. 
But there are no photos that have ever come out of Archie that were taken in the UK by the paparazzi, only of Megan carrying him from preschool in the US. And then last Friday, as media people all around the world were so excited over the revelations in Spare, Harry was photographed looking very thunderous while he was out walking their Labrador Pula in the rain. And this now joins the series of other photos of Harry doing really interesting things like going hiking, riding his bicycle, and walking along the beach. Also, there are some photos of Meghan and Harry getting on and off private jets in the U.S. on a number of occasions. We got shots of them leaving an appointment in L.A., of Harry playing polo and Megan watching from the sidelines, Megan going out shopping on at least two different occasions. We got shots of them visiting their neighbor, Oprah Winfrey, and also of them going out to eat on occasions, including with his cousin, Princess Eugenie, and her husband, Jack Brooksbank. And then we also got some photos of the two of them going out to eat with Catherine McPhee and her husband, David Foster. I mean, the U.S. celebrity website, TMZ, has even published photos of Meghan and Harry's dog walker exercising one of their dogs. So at the end of the day, if Harry and Meghan have been targeted for the paparazzi so far, then it looks like Spare might only end up making the situation a lot worse. And then there is the second thing to consider here, that in releasing this autobiography, the case could easily be made that Harry has breached his own privacy. And during an interview with the BBC last week, this is an argument that was echoed by the chairman of UK's independent press standards organization, Lord Fox. He said that if someone is prepared to discuss their private life, then it is not unreasonable for the press to write about it and to say to some extent they have brought an invasion of privacy on themselves. Might Harry even find himself on the wrong end of some kind of complaint? Perhaps. Now, while it's not likely, Ponsford wrote in the Gazette, it will be interesting to see whether he himself is subject to a privacy action. And he also pointed to a case from 2006, saying it showed that those in close family relationships owe a duty of confidence to each other. So really, what might the consequences of this be? Well, there does seem to be one thing we can be certain about after watching this week's slow motion train wreck. I think we're about to be treated to a whole lot more photos of Harry and his trademark scowl. And also, what about their dog walker? Maybe that dog walker also needs to get an agent. And you, do you agree with me? If yes, please like and share this video with anybody else who would enjoy it. If not, please let me know why in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to our Kate Middleton and the Queen News YouTube channel to support us more and more. Now thank you so much for tuning in, good night, and I'll be back to see you all tomorrow.